Woo. Let me introduce you to Stepchild. She is the <clears throat> autocross road course slash gonna be new drift car. She is a, was a brute. Um, I've got this thing completely stripped down, ready for a roll cage. Um, this thing, it was supposed to get a roll cage and then COVID hit and messed up my plans completely. So I'm going to go over, sorry about all my mess over here. Don't look at that. It's my garage slash shop slash storage area. So, um, but I'm going to show you the car, show you what she's all about. Um, uh, we're going to start the rear. It is a 1981 C3 Corvette that I've built up for first was just a mean street car. And then it turned into a autocross car. And now we are into full blown road course big road course and gonna be drift car so um i actually made this custom spoiler on the back <clears throat> my own design on that i made a custom plate to hold the uh gas can cap I'm gonna have all that hooked up later on with the big 32 gallon fuel cell um she is riding on 18 by 12s weld wheels all the way around she is riding on 335s squared she is all there let's see if y'all can see under here oh it's very very dark i need to get a flashlight riding on coilovers from uh van steel van steel t-arms but I've got Duntov motors, bearings, hubs, and brakes. Duntov brakes, they take the original housings and they bore them out a little bit. Put titanium pistons, high temp seals and gaskets in them. They can take more heat just like the big brake kit. So I've got Duntov's factory brakes on this car. But it stops way better than my C6. So. Um, starting from the middle there's nothing inside of there like I said it's getting ready for a, a uh, roll cage there's no motor no transmission in it right now the motor that's in the C6 right now will be pulled out and put in this car so this car will be getting the LS3 out of the C6 you may be asking what's going in the C6 then well, have to wait and find out. But this car will be getting the LS3 with the cam, long tubes, all that good jazz. It's going to be made it to a Muncie four speed. That's the plan as of right now. Things change all the time. So, um, like I said, she's got 18 by 12s all the way around. She fits her sets nice and wide she's got some nice curves to her so this car started out in our possession when i was 16 years old as a completely factory car completely stock and as we took it and wanted to do more upgrades with it we first did a 383 stroker from blueprint engines and a turbo 350 from hughes transmissions with a 3800 stall and this car was awesome it dominated basically anything at the time that was in this small town well of course when you upgrade that you got to the domino effect that's when we had the Duntov rear end installed upgraded the half shafts or chrome molly upgraded the t-arms all that stuff 
coilovers, all upgraded. So, and then we did the front suspension and I've got the Van Steel tubular lowers, Van Steel Colt, no, QA1 double adjustable front coilovers, and then <clears throat> the SPC upper control arms on this car right now. And it's also got the Borgeson quick steer uh, steering box, which we're going to be replacing that with a C6 quick steer rack and pinion system. So that'll be custom fabbed in eventually. Um, what else can I say about this car? Um, this is a, um, a project that I hope will end up back on the road very quickly so and it should be getting a roll cage here in the next month or two so that'll be fun to see as well that'll be real exciting um that's who she is that's who the stepchild is because i beat on this car like a redheaded stepchild and i can say that because i'm redheaded so that's her that is the 4L84 Big Booty Judy. That needs to be rebuilt and installed. So, you need to know. This is like the fourth revision of this car. Um, I will enter in a slideshow of all the stages of this car. Um, I actually pulled the motor out transmission out and rebuilt the whole front end last year in my apartment garage and then you know went to the autocross a couple times with it well when I said I was tearing it down for roll cage again that was also in my apartment garage in Louisiana so this is a current state from it coming directly from the little garage in Louisiana so we shall go underneath and I will show you everything. Now, all these parts are used. They are have been abused. They are dirty. They're not brand new shiny stuff. I abuse my cars. I use the crap out of them. So, yeah, they're a little spotted, but I did ceramic coat these beforehand as soon as they were brand new. So those will clean up just fine. These tires are brand new. So, Starting from the front, we have the uh, Van Steel massive front sway bar. Their connections, there's those tuber control arms I was talking about. Oh, they are Van Steel, but they're from QA1. I will stand corrected there. Double adjustable, just the inbound and rebound rates. Like I said, we've got the Duntov big brakes on here. They've been bored out. they got titanium pistons, ceramic pads. They are the bee's knees. Oh, they also have Wildwood rotors and hats. Um, just a stock style drag link for now. Um, I plan on mounting a, fabbing up a way to mount a C6 Corvette quick steer rack and pinion in here in order to get our more angle for drifting events and whatnot. So this steering setup, which is basically brand new, that's a nice brand new Borgeson setup. This will all probably end up on the 69 vet. Um, the brakes, yeah, they're hanging. <laughs> um, I left the system in here, so I didn't want air getting to my calipers. Um, Yes, I do have, this looks like crap. It's unfinished. I haven't been able to paint in here yet. That's what happens. And I had to paint the inside of here with a paintbrush instead of spraying it. You gotta do what you gotta do when you're living in an apartment complex, okay? So, judge me, don't judge me. I really don't care. So, AC delete, all that crap. And moving on, see, so like I said, I've cleaned and painted the frame. 
it's just dirty from we got caught in a hurricane coming back from louisiana and uh whole car got filthy from rain so it is what it is um band steel T arms, good grief, I wouldn't blink there. Van steel coilovers, their true track system, chrome molly half shafts. Still got the bat wing with the Dana 44 diff. I know it's not very common, but we did it and it works just fine. Um, my dad actually made this bracket before these were a big deal and easily um found on aftermarket so you'll see i'm missing my caliper amp, my rotors they're in louisiana i didn't have time to put them on and um yeah calipers are there but they're tidied up so i don't have air in them um i'm leaving this room here we'll have a 32 gallon fuel tank and then i'll end up having a roll cage partially around it and then have my filler neck all hooked up to where it's actually functional in actual race car style. So that is it from underneath of here. Man, look at those big old honkers. Man. I love this car. All right. So the story on Stepchild, um, my dad bought her from a church friend when I was 16 years old and shortly after we ended up putting a blueprint 383 stroker and a Hughes Turbo 350 in it. Um, that was an awesome power plant and uh, we quickly ended up upgrading the rear end with a Duntov. Uh, 383 Dana 44 diff with 600 pound springs and chrome molly output shafts, um, chrome molly half, uh, half shafts, and then chrome molly output shafts or output hubs, and then uh, fan steel T arms and their coilovers on the rear. Um, man, that that really made this car handle a whole lot better. Um, and then later on we ended up robbing cars off of my 69 model and i put my uh van steel van steel lower a arms on it the qa1 no i'm sorry right tech double adjustable coilovers on the front and then spc upper a arms um, i love those y'all saw those in the 55 video they're quick adjustments. I mean, they're they're slick. They're slick. Um, this car handles amazing. Um, I would go out on the track, do stuff in this car, and then go get my C6, and then basically nowhere. Don't even come. It doesn't even compare. It doesn't even come close to what the performance of this car and what it can do. Um, and this was all. Bef I mean, before I put the nice big wheels on it. Um, before it only had uh, 18 by 18 by nine and a half and so I mean I haven't even got to really enjoy these yet um, I did take it to one autocross which I had uh, 15 by 10s all the way around it and I had 325 by 50 drag radials on the rear and then I had a 315 uh, 50 drag radial on the front I mean there were drag radials but hey once they got warmed up and they had enough air pre tire pressure in them they held in a corner just fine now they squealed a little bit more than normal but they still held uh, we were out there able to we weren't able to compete in the autocross due to the tread depth of the drag radials since there were only 100 tre uh, tread wear uh, most autocrosses require a minimum of 200 so weren't able to compete but we were doing fun runs and we were we were up there with everyone all the big guys with 
running the Vic Forge lines and LS3s and all that stuff. So I was very content with what we had our setup. And um, but since then, um, you know, I took the car to Louisiana, and I was in preparation to get a big, nice roll case in front of this car. And then COVID hit, and I was basically out of work for two months. Well. It still doesn't have a roll cage in it, so but that's fixing to change. Uh, we are very, very close to getting a roll cage in this car, so that'll be exciting. Um, the plans with this car, um, man, I've got a ton of plans. Uh, LS Fest, Holly LS Fest, and then any big, you know, SECA autocross racing. Uh, the good guys autocross and maybe you know I'd love to do an Optima challenge um, in this car and then during all of that see what we can do with this car in the drifting world um, because of the suspension upgrades and the tight steering that this car is going to have and the amount of angle it's going to have it should be a universal car you know be able to change a couple things on the car and then go from autocross to drifting so it'd be a universal car. So that's my plan. Um, this car is actually getting the LS3 out of my C6. Um, and then it's also getting a Muncie four speed that I've already got. And uh, nice hand brakes and wildwood set up. I mean, it's gonna be, gonna be the bee's knees. So this is gonna be the new beast. Um, She's rocking 18 by 12 weld wheels with four and a quarter back spacing. Um, these are 335 30s, uh, BF Goodrich Rivals. These are awesome. So I've got these on all four corners, 335s squared. So this car should be able to stop and go, no problem. Um, I should be able to lay into the fuel and it really grab. Now we'll need a different wheel setup for drifting and probably not as nice of a wheel for drifting, but we're going to work on that later. Hello, Mr. Crow. I am also going to enter in some photos of when this car came into our possession and how it evolved to what it is now. So I'll end up a slideshow of pictures to show you how it ended up here. Because it's been a long process to get it to this point. This was Guys, don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel click the bell so you know when i post another video all the support helps every little bit helps um comment let me know how i'm doing if this video sucks let me know if this video is cool give me a dirty thumbs up let me know i need feedback guys Y'all gotta let help me help you. I want to give y'all the content y'all want to see. You let me know what that is. Y'all want to see intricate how-to videos? I can do that. You want to see just stories and ridiculousness? We can do that. But you have to let me know. <laughs>